It's Tuesday, February 11th, 2025, and boy, was it snowing hard this morning when I walked into the weather house. The Appalachian Mountains here in eastern Kentucky are beautiful this morning as we have a major winter storm ongoing. This is spreading across into West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware throughout the rest of the day. Let's start talking about this. First of all, before we get into the forecast, I want to remind everyone, please send me your snow reports, especially if you have a Yala meter here like Jessica and Remy G over there in Circle Pines, Minnesota. Thank you so much for your picture here. I want to see all the snow, okay? So send in your reports. The best way to do that is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram through comments and messages and stuff, but we also have pixitryanhallyall.com. Here's the latest watches and warnings from the National Weather Service, and there's a bunch out there. Winter storm warnings from Kentucky all the way over through Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, even southern portions of New Jersey are currently under a winter storm warning. This is for storm number one one, which is happening right now. Storm number two starts tonight and goes on into tomorrow. That's what these winter storm warnings are for over here towards Kansas City, Des Moines, and then eventually Chicago, uh, Milwaukee. That area will be included in winter storm warnings later today. We do have an enhanced risk of a significant winter storm today from the mountains of West Virginia and Virginia over towards the Delmarva area. Get ready in Richmond, Virginia. Get ready in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a very wintry day. Now here's what that radar could look like as we go through the rest of the day today. About 3 p.m. Uh, it's going to be snowing up here in Charleston, West Virginia. It might even be snowing a little bit in Pittsburgh. Uh, this is also when some of the heavier snow is going to start in Washington, D.C. It will have been snowing for a while in Richmond at this point. And this is also when we're really going to start to see the sleet and the freezing rain breaking out down here in southwestern Virginia into extreme northwestern portions of North Carolina where we do expect to see a uh, some significant icing that's going to increase in intensity as we get towards 7 p.m. tonight. This is also when we're going to see some of the heaviest snow in Delaware. We'll see one inch per hour snowfall rates likely in Delaware around 7 p.m. southern New Jersey. You guys as well. But notice how the warm nose here is really making it up into eastern Kentucky. All that snow you saw in my clips at the beginning of this video will probably be washed away by 7 p.m. tonight as the rain is really coming in behind the snow for a lot of us here, especially in Kentucky, West Virginia, and southwestern portions of Virginia. That does look like it's going to fall mostly as freezing rain, though, especially in the higher elevations of southwestern Virginia. And some of that ice might make it all the way up to Richmond by midnight tonight. So definitely worried about the ice storm potential in extreme eastern West Virginia and north central and southwestern Virginia. Make sure you guys are ready for that. There's also going to be a heavy shot of snow going through Long Island, maybe even up there towards Cape Cod as we get towards the early morning hours tomorrow. By the time this is all said and done, storm number one will be out of our hair for the most part by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning on Wednesday, and then that's when we're going to be kind of shifting our focus over here to storm number two. Snowfall totals, it looks like we're probably going to see about eight or nine inches of snow in the higher elevations of uh, West Virginia over here. Richmond, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see you guys sneak out of here with about six inches of snow. At Washington, D.C., three to five inches. Baltimore, same for you. There's also going to be a heavy streak of snow down there there in south central portions of Delaware and extreme southern portions of New Jersey. New York City could see an inch of snow or so, maybe one to three inches in Philadelphia, and that's the gist of what we're talking about here. I do want to kind of emphasize that the farther south you are, a lot of this snow is going to get washed away. So like over here in eastern Kentucky, we got about four inches of snow this morning, but it's already down to three inches because it started raining. In a couple of hours, it, it'll be gone. You know what I mean? So although it very well might uh, snow eight to nine inches in Lynchburg and Farmville in Virginia. Just keep in mind that as that rain comes in tonight, it's going to cut down on what you have on the ground tomorrow morning, for example. So just keep that in mind, but it's going to come down heavily. It's going to come down fast and it's going to cause a lot of travel problems. Even more problems likely to come out of this ice that's going to be accumulating from the mountains of North Carolina up into south central and western portions of Virginia, eastern portions of West Virginia and western portions of Maryland up into south central Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. We do have ice storm warnings in effect for this area. Some places could get over a quarter inch of ice, and there's a couple uh, zones that might exceed a half inch of ice, especially in southwestern Virginia. I'm especially concerned about the I-77 corridor between Wytheville and Fancy Gap up towards Roanoke, Christiansburg, Seansville, Pulaski, Virginia. You guys need to be watching out for power outages. This could 
be the kind of storm that knocks out the power for multiple days and makes travel extremely treacherous. So make sure you're prepared for the ice portion of this storm. Oh my gosh, there's a lot going on. We're deep into this video already and we've only talked about day one. Now let's go on to day two. We've got an enhanced risk of a significant winter storm from Kansas up to Chicago. And once again, here's what that could look like on radar tomorrow morning around 9 a.m. Heavy snow just north of St. Louis, uh, some moderate snow in the Kansas City area. Some of the heavier snow tomorrow morning looks to be down here in southwestern Missouri, southeastern Kansas, and then of course the snow is going to be just starting in southern Wisconsin here around 9 a.m. What's it look like at 1 p.m.? Snow in a very large area uh, is going to be spreading across Iowa up into Michigan. It'll start snowing in southern Ontario around this time. Notice how the heaviest snow is really confined very closely to the rain snow line here. So places like Peoria, Illinois, Chicago look to be the hot spots for some of the heaviest snow totals here. As if you're too far south, you might get all rain. If you're too far north, you might end up with just a lot of really light snow and not enough uh, heavy snow to lead to significant accumulations. The entire storm system really comes together more significantly the closer it gets to Canada. So as this starts coming into southern Ontario, expect really heavy snow around 9 p.m. tomorrow morning. Really heavy snow across the entire state of Michigan and of course Detroit. You guys are going to be right there on the line between all snow and, and some freezing rain getting into the mix. So make sure you're prepared for maybe some really treacherous travel uh, as you get into the latter part of the day on Wednesday into the early morning hours on uh, Thursday. And then look at that warm nose just completely stealing all the snow from the mid-Atlantic and the northeast on this one until you get up into New England where it does look like we're going to see mostly snow in Maine for the most part. So that's the progression of storm number two. How about them snowfall totals? Kansas City, about six inches of snow is a safe bet. Des Moines, I would say three to six inches of snow for you. Cedar Rapids, maybe six to eight. Chicago, I would say maybe five to nine inches of snow is a pretty good call for y'all. St. Louis, one to three inches, I think is what we've got to say for you because you're going to be riding that line between rain and snow. It just really depends on how long you get snow and how long you get rain. So one to three inches is what I'm calling for y'all. Milwaukee, I think it's safe to say four to eight inches for y'all as well. Grand Rapids, Michigan, I would say a good three to six inches is possible over there. And as the storm goes even farther east, it's going to get stronger and it's going to drop probably around a foot of snow near Lake Huron in the eastern portion of Michigan. And then it'll drop well over a foot of snow as we get into southern Ontario, especially areas north and west of Ottawa near Deep River and North Bay. But look, even Maine isn't expecting much snow here in the very tippy top of Maine, we might see four to eight inches or so, but for the most part, the rain's going to steal this one from the northeast. But while we've been focused on the snow all this time, there's something else happening on these simulated radar things that we're looking at that we're not talking about yet, and we need to, and that is the severe weather threat. Look at all of this rain. Look at all this convective energy moving through the southeast uh, as all of this moisture tries to come up into these low pressure systems that's causing our snowstorms. What happens? whenever all of that energy meets the cold fronts and the boundaries that's coming off of the main uh, storm systems is usually uh, big time severe weather and that's exactly what we're expecting as we go into Wednesday. We'll have storms in the morning and then look at this big clearing section right here where there's an open warm sector and it looks like there's some supercells that try to form especially into the overnight period on Wednesday into the early morning hours on Thursday. This looks like a very robust tornado threat for portions of Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana Wednesday night and Thursday. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center has went ahead and issued this slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow, February 12th, from Louisiana up into uh, Alabama. This includes Jackson, Mississippi, uh, and this is driven by wind and a tornado threat. There's a 5% probability of a tornado happening within 25 miles of any given point in the brown zone there. I expect that that number could actually go up a little bit if the models continue to show what they've been showing. So definitely Definitely something to watch out for. Don't be scared. Be prepared. I would not be surprised at all to see some tornado warnings tomorrow around Jackson, Mississippi. And on top of the severe weather threat, we've got a significant rainfall event happening as well. You saw me scrolling through the frames there. We have storms on top of storms on top of storms, one right after another. This leads to flash flooding from East Texas all the way up into the Southern Appalachian Mountains. This does include Western North Carolina, which doesn't want to see any more flooding. 
setting, but unfortunately you guys are going to be in a pretty hard hit area with this storm as far as rain totals go. You can see here that anywhere from four to eight inches of rain is going to be possible over the next seven days from Louisiana up past the Mississippi River into the Tennessee Valley and into the southern Appalachians, eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, western portions of North Carolina, northern Alabama, and northern Georgia needs to watch this especially hard because this is where we have those mountains and those valleys that make rainfall more dangerous, okay? It can rain eight inches in Memphis, and that's bad, but if it rains eight inches in Knoxville, Tennessee, or something like that, it's a completely different story. It could lead to catastrophic flooding. So make sure you're paying attention to the weather, those flood watches and those flood warnings as they come out, especially in the Appalachian Mountains, because this is the kind of system that could cause significant flooding. And notice how it's not just over here in the southeast that we have rain. Also, the entire west coast is lighting up with uh, significant rainfall amounts as well. And, you know, we would normally expect this in the Pacific Northwest. We would even sometimes expect to see all of this precipitation in northern portions of California. But look, even southern California is going to get in on the moisture plume over the next seven days. And this is actually leading to a moderate risk of excessive rainfall for southern California. This is the day three out look here. The coast is going to face the highest risk right around Los Angeles there. This is made worse by the recent burn scars that we have. We could be looking at debris flows. Lots of different flash flooding risks come along with an active wildfire season. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. The northern valleys are also at risk. The soil is already wet from the past storm. So all the way up and down the western side of California needs to be watching out for those flash flood warnings as well. All right. So looking even farther into the future, Future. This is the big weather feature that's been causing all of our problems, okay? We've got cold air sinking down from Canada, allowing for lift out in front of it, warm moist air meets cold air, and in the middle, we get storms. We get storms that cause severe weather in the south, flooding, and then also snow on the cold side. So what happens after this big dip in the jet stream moves by is we get a big ridge, okay? So we're going to have a brief period of time where things really warm up in the central and the eastern portions of the United States, and things are going to get quite chilly over over here in the West. This is kind of like a loaded gun situation for another bowling ball trough to come sliding through the United States. This one's actually going to be much farther south than the one we're dealing with now, allowing for more interaction with the Gulf moisture that's going to be trying to come up. And this could lead to yet another significant severe weather outbreak in the South. And that's why we have a rare day five slight risk of severe weather already for the Southeast on Saturday, February 15th. This goes as far as Nashville and it goes all the way back towards Lake Charles and New Orleans. So this is a huge area. Uh, I hope everybody over here is ready because Saturday is going to be a loud day, loud night, as uh, we have a potential for nocturnal tornadoes with this one. It looks like it's going to be a really busy, severe weather day. If I had to put money on when my next live stream is going to be, it's there's a chance that we go live tomorrow for the severe weather and the snow. But if not then, then definitely this day. It looks like it's going to be a big, severe weather day. Uh, get your severe weather plans in place because there's going to be uh, probably lots of severe weather warnings and tornado warnings throughout the day on Saturday. But as always, don't be scared. Be prepared. Know what you're going to do whenever that warning comes through. And just know that uh, we are going to have severe weather down here and it's going to lead to more flooding problems. And also on top of that, because it's winter, you can't have a big storm system without snow. There's going to be another significant snowstorm risk on the northern side of this storm system that's coming through. So yeah, we're going to have severe weather in the south, more snow in the north. You can see this pretty clearly on our day five winter storm outlook for February 16th here. We've got an enhanced risk for a lot of the Northeast. So pretty high chance of a significant winter storm up there in New York over towards New England, even back into southeastern portions of Michigan. And then we have an enhanced risk on the day six outlook as well for Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Slight risk goes all the way back into the mountains of North Carolina. Once again, the cold air is going to be sticking around for a while, at least through February 20th. We expect to be quite below average in the Great Lakes region, all the way down into the South Central U.S. Things are going to be a little bit above average in the Southwest. We've been much below average for most of the winter here, and uh, this has been one of the most wintry winters I think we've ever covered here on the channel so far. So a lot of us were looking forward to this, and some of us can't wait until spring. Which one are you? Let me know in the comments below. And as we go through the next several hours, there's going to be lots of warnings that come out, more winter storm warnings. Tomorrow, we expect to see lots of severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. If you want a free resource to get all of that information in real time, faster than pretty much anywhere else, even when I'm not live,
live. Y'all Bot is always live 24 7 over on the Ryan Hall Y'all Extra channel. We'll put a link in the top of the description. And uh, yeah, it's free. You don't have to pay for this. It's on there all day long. And it's a really valuable resource if you want real time weather information. We've even added wildfire and earthquake information to this. And we fixed a lot of the bugs and updated a lot of things. So if you've checked this out before and you were impressed with it, you'll like it even more now. So go over there and check this out and kind of consider this the waiting room as we wait to see if we're going to go live tomorrow on the main channel. So yeah, go check out Yalba and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is a long video. <laughs> There's a lot going on. And of course, we're going to have another one tomorrow. So turn notifications on, subscribe, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. Ooh.